That's surely gonna be my cab. Oh, where's this summit? bit of a blizzard coming in, like literally you can't see anything really anymore, so I'm going to head off. Hello, I'm Tom Bushell, a sport and travel journalist, and I've spent years travelling the world reporting on sport, and now I'm bringing you with me as the Sports Explorer to discover the sports that make a destination and the adventures that bring it to life. Each week, I'm telling stories, giving you tips and guides, and showcasing the very best sport and adventure travel that you can find. Put simply, I'm telling the story of our world through sport and adventure. And this week, I am guiding you from here at Glasgow Queen Street Station to the summit of the UK's highest mountain, Ben Nevis. So if you love your sport, adventure and travel, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment below with any questions. The first thing to know if you are travelling by train is that direct trains leave here from Glasgow Queen Street and take just under four hours to reach Fort William. Now there are only three trains a day but Scotland's West Highland Line is one of the world's most stunning railway journeys, even in less than perfect weather. Next stop, the mountains. Once settled into your seat, take in the stunning views and be sure to pack your own food and drinks. Quite often these trains don't have a food service. When boarding the train at Glasgow, make sure you get on the rear two carriages as the train splits at Crean Larrick. The front two carriages head to Oban, whilst the back two continue on to Fort William. Unbuckling is complete, and we can now continue with our journey. The West Highland Line is the westernmost line in Great Britain. Along the route, you'll follow the banks of the glorious Loch Lomond and venture across Rannoch Moor. We are now approaching Fort William. It is worth noting, give yourself plenty of time to get from Glasgow to Fort William by train. If the weather is deemed not great, 20 mile per hour speed restrictions are put in place for large sections of the line, meaning it could take you up to six hours to complete the journey to Fort William. And that is exactly what has happened to me today, over an hour late arriving at our destination. But because of Scott Rail's delay and repay policy, I can get a full refund on that journey. So, welcome to Fort William. I arrive richer than when I departed. There is a supermarket by the train station for any last minute supplies, but I had bigger problems to worry about. This weather is not good. The rain is torrential and you can't even really see the mountains because the cloud cover is so low. My other problem is, normally outside the train station down this stretch of road here, there's taxis, but there's none tonight. And I've called four taxi companies. <laughs> not one is answering. Been at the train station for two hours now. That's surely gonna be my cab. Oh. Oh. Bye, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good to see you. We're in. Oh. I'm gonna get my head down in the hotel for the night. And let's hope when I wake up in the morning, it's a little bit brighter. This has been my home for the night, the Ben Nevis Hotel and Leisure Club. And actually, little tip for you, if you book directly with this place, you get an instant 10% off 
More importantly though, I can see blue sky. Blue sky. So I think we need to start hiking. The start point for the Ben Nevis mountain path is from the Glen Nevis Visitor Centre, which is just a short taxi ride from the centre of Fort William. Here we go then, it is time to conquer Britain's highest mountain and I will guide you to the top step by step so you can follow in my footsteps. The summit of Ben Nevis sits at 4,411 feet and its Gaelic Scottish name translates to Venomous Mountain. It is the UK's Everest. And to start the hike, you'll cross the bridge over the River Nevis, then take a right before turning left at the signpost. Well, that didn't take long to change. Two minutes in, soaked. This could be a fun six hours ahead, eh? <laughs> The reason I am climbing Ben Nevis today is because it is actually my 40th birthday today. The 7th of October 1982. I can't think of a better way to celebrate than reaching the UK's highest point. You'll start to climb and as you reach a stile where you will officially join the Ben Nevis mountain path, you'll see the Ben Nevis Inn on your left, a perfect location your post-hike refreshment. But right now, we've just got to concentrate on getting up. More than 130,000 people hike Ben Nevis year-round, which means whenever you do the climb, you'll always see someone on the mountain. And given the path provides a clear route to the summit, it's easy to see why this hike is so popular. So the mountain trail, or the tourist path, as it's commonly known, used to be a pony track back in the 19th century. It's the most popular and safest way up and down the mountain and the full stretch to the top and back down to the bottom is about 17 kilometers. So it normally takes people between five and nine hours to complete the summit trail. Of course, it's important to take in the views and enjoy them on this first stretch because it won't be long until we're going into the clouds. But for now, just look at the magnificent scenery around here. Wow. Not a bad birthday present, is it? Another shower passing through. They're quite nice, actually. Keeps you refreshed. This is the first real switchback on the mountain path going upwards and at that point you know you are about a quarter of your way to the summit. It's taken me about an hour to do that stretch. After those first few switchbacks that's when the path really starts to get quite steep. You can see there it's just essentially a big rock staircase. The sun's come out for my birthday and just look at this. What a day, what a day. The path that climbs you out of the glen whilst offering brilliant views southwards is the steepest part of the hike but after two or so hours you will reach flatter ground briefly and come across Loch Meal, which sits at an altitude of 1,870 feet. It's the perfect location for a rest and a spot of lunch. They call it Halfway Lake, which means we are halfway to Britain's highest peak. Once you've began climbing away from Loch Meal, you'll soon encounter a waterfall to cross on the path. We don't want to fall down this. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, fully submerged. <laughs> 
good test for the boots. Shortly afterwards, with the clouds rolling in, I sensed that things were about to get a little tougher. We're in the upper echelon of the mountain now. The weather drastically changes. The wind picks up. It's dramatically colder. The path in the upper section of the mountain switches back countless times, meaning it's not as steep as the lower section, but it can feel like it is never ending and it's looser ground to walk on. It is brutal up here. The temperature in the upper section of Ben Nevis today is freezing, but with the wind, it feels more like minus 10, say the weather forecasts. So when you do do this, it is imperative you're wearing the right clothing. It's all about the layers. All about the layers. The clouds have just broken <laughs> as we start to get closer to the summit. Look at this. Just look at this view. This hike is basically just like a four to five hour uphill slog. It's not technically difficult, but there is not much rest provided from going uphill. That is the switchback section done. We're now turning left onto the final straight, which guides us gradually upwards all the way to the summit and on this gravel track there are cairns dotted along the track to make sure you stay on course but we're almost there we are almost there I passed a guy about 20 minutes ago and he said ah oh, you've got 20 minutes to go I've just passed another guy now. Guess what he said? He said, oh, you've got 20 minutes to go. <laughs> All the way along the trail, it is hugely important that you stay on the path, especially in low visibility. And as you approach the summit, the trail bends around to the summit, but don't be tempted to cut the corner as there are huge gorges surrounding the top that you need to be aware of. Yeah, you've got to be really careful here, because that, that is full to your death. And when it's windy, and you're near the edge, stay away from it. Oh, where's this summit? At the top here, there's a full-on blizzard. <laughs> oh dear, I can see it, I can see it, just about. As the summit of Ben Nevis edges closer, with the blizzard intensifying, you'll pass the ruins of the old observatory and the hut built in case of emergencies. I may need it shortly. It's been a brutal, relentless hike, a journey that began at Glasgow Queen Street, but the end is now approaching. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this guide proves to you how you can climb Ben Nevis in the winter as well. Final few steps. And we, ladies and gentlemen, are now the highest you can possibly get in the United Kingdom, in the middle of a blizzard. Welcome to the top of Ben Nevis.